there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Sherry Elizabeth. I post Disney videos every Tuesday and Friday. I would love for you to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified and become a part of our little Disney community here. I've received a lot of requests recently to do more hotel reviews. We are very, very blessed and are annual pass holders, so we have made quite a few trips to Disney in the last year or so and stayed at a variety of different resorts. On our trip in September of 2018, we were very, very fortunate that we were able to spend two nights at the Grand Floridian, which was truly just, it was a dream come true. It was like surreal that we got to stay there. I don't know if we'll be staying there again, um, but it was just, it was my birthday. It was very, very special. I've been asked a lot about what it was like to stay there, and so I wanted to share it with all of you. I have a bunch of notes because I didn't want to forget anything. Okay, so the Grand Floridian. You know, they say in real estate, location, 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 and that is what the Grand Floridian, I think, is all about. Well, it's about other things too, but like that is so, so key. The Grand Floridian is Walt Disney World's flagship resort. It is an icon. It is modeled after the Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego, which if you're new to my channel, I'm actually originally from San Diego, so I kind of grew up looking at the Hotel Del so it was kind of extra special to be staying at the Grand Floridian. The theming at the Grand Floridian is a little bit different than the other resorts. I mean, I know every resort has its own theming. I would say that the Grand Floridian is the most elegant resort. It has Victorian theming throughout, which I think is really, really beautiful. It's not as kid-friendly, I would say, as some of the other resorts. You're not going to see like characters all over on the walls and there are hidden Mickeys throughout and there's some really, really beautiful like murals on the wall which my son really enjoyed, but it is a more mature, elegant theming. Now that being said, there is a lot of things for kids to do. One thing that we did not take advantage of but thought was really cool was they have a splash pad area and it's Alice in Wonderland like Mad Hatter themed and they have this big hat that fills with water and then dumps which it's just really, really neat. The lobby was amazing. It is a five-story tall atrium with some stained glass windows and gorgeous chandeliers. One afternoon, there was a pianist. So you got to hear that throughout the atrium. In another evening, there was a full orchestra band on one of the balconies, and it was really just lovely. We saw a lot of people over um, on the side in the lounge having cocktails, and it really felt just special. There was a little children's area. There was mini chairs, not mini, M-I-N-N-I-E, M-I-N-I, -I, chairs. Um, and a TV with Disney cartoons. My son really enjoyed that. My husband sat at a nearby chair and watched him while I did some shopping. So that was just a nice touch that really catered to children. The Grand Floridian has an amazing view of the Magic Kingdom. It has a great view of the fireworks in the evening and throughout I don't think inside, although I don't know that, but I know that outside they pump the music in from um, Happily Ever After, so you can watch the fireworks and listen to the music right there. It also has an awesome view of the electric water pageant uh, that goes on the Seven Seas Lagoon every night. The Grand Floridian also has an amazing spa. We did not take advantage of that, but it is there. So the room. We stayed in Sago, I think it's Key. It's C-A-Y, but I think they call it Key. I don't know. So we stayed in Sago, let's call it Key. So Sago Key is the building that is closest to the Magic Kingdom. It is right next to the monorail and it is just steps from the main building, which was a very, very convenient location. The room was spacious. It slept five. It had two queen beds and then a pullout couch. The beds were very, very comfortable. They were a little bit higher than normal, which I really, I liked. I thought it was kind of nice and they just felt really plush. We slept really well there. The room was beautifully appointed. It was elegant without being gaudy. It had that Victorian feel. It felt like it was newer and it was really, really lovely. It had a very nice private bathroom. 
and the bathroom was spacious and it had a lot of counter space. And the one thing that I did like is it had a hamper, which was kind of random, but I like that it had a hamper. A lot of times I bring my own hamper, um, but they had a hamper there, which was kind of cool. And I think the biggest thing about the room and the Grand Floridian in general is the smell. If you have visited there, you know it has everywhere, the rooms, the lobby, just anytime you're inside a building, it has this beautiful like floral smell that is just really, really, I think it's really, really nice. And it's something my husband and I joke about like every time it's like, the smell. So I know that's random, but if you know what I'm talking about, tell me in the comments below. I think all the resorts have a unique smell, but the smell of the Grand Floridian is just, it smells good. Transportation. So when we talk about location, 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 I think one of the biggest things that it has going for it, well it has a lot of things going for it, is the transportation. It is the last stop on the monorail before the Magic Kingdom. So we timed it. We closed the door of our room. I started the timer. It was 15 minutes from closing that door to getting to the gate of the Magic Kingdom. That's walking up to the monorail, going through security, and taking the monorail over, which is everything. You can also take a boat to and from the Magic Kingdom, and then you can also take a boat to the Polynesian. If you are going to Epcot, you can take the monorail, the loop, and go over to the Ticket and Transportation Center and get to Epcot that way. If you are going to Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom, you take a bus. I'm told that those buses are shared buses with the Polynesian, but I cannot speak firsthand. Okay, the shopping. One thing my husband said is that he thought that there was more shopping at the Grand Floridian than a lot of other resorts. A lot of resorts will kind of have like the gift store and then they will have like the mercantile or something where there's like the the food, the grocery kind of stuff. The Grand Floridian has, and I had to look it up, it actually has six stores. It does have a basin store there, which if you're a big Disney person, you know, basin is kind of like the bath and lotion and smelly stuff store. It is really, really nice. There's one over at Disney Springs, but there's also a basin in the Grand Floridian, and we like to get soaps and different things there, which is just a treat. There's Commander's Porter, which is a men's clothing store, an accessory store. They had like stuff for golf. They had a lot of nice men's clothing, Tom of Bahama stuff. Um, which I don't think that there's like another men's store anywhere in any of the other resorts. Summer Lace, which is one of my favorite stores. It's a women's designer store. They have brands like Vineyard Vines, Tommy Bahama, Lily Pulitzer. They have Dooney and Burke, Pandora, Kate Spade, kind of all of those um, women's higher end brands there. They also have like a little children's section where they have princess dresses and some princess accessories. They have Sandy Cove Gifts, which is kind of uh, like a little mini mart kind of store, I guess we'll call it. That's where you're gonna get your coolers with your, you know, water and sodas and different like sundries and that kind of stuff, which is kind of like the general store, the mercantile that all the resorts seem to have. And then there's M Mouse Mercantile, which is on the second floor, which is a huge like character store, I'll call it. That's where you're gonna find kind of all the stuff that you'd find like in the Emporium. So all of your character items, toys, that kind of stuff, it is a lot of fun to go through there and see what they have. There's also a gift store at the spa. Dining. So we unfortunately did not dine at the Grand Floridian while we were there. It's kind of a bummer. I wish that we did, but we didn't. There's one quick service restaurant and that is Gasparilla Grill. And that is where you will fill up your uh, resort mugs while you were there. It is on the first floor. I don't know if I mentioned this, but the Gasparilla Grill was actually the part of the building that was directly adjacent to our building that we stayed in. So it was nice because we could just like walk down and go fill up our drinks. There's a nice patio area right outside there with tables and umbrellas that you can have a view. I think you look right onto Space Mountain. So that's really nice and at night you can see the fireworks when you're sitting right there. It's really pretty. There's the Grand Flirting Cafe which is pretty popular. I feel like it's becoming more and more popular. I think that their breakfast is probably what they're known for. 1900 
Park Fair is a character um, meal, and for breakfast, they kind of have a mismatch of characters. Alice, Mad Hatter, Mary Poppins, Tigger, and Winnie the Pooh. For dinner, they turn into like a Cinderella dinner, so it is Cinderella, Prince Charming, Anastasia, Drizella, and Lady Tremaine. And then they have fine dining there, and they actually have three of them. They have Narcosis, Citricos, and Victorian Alberts. Victorian Alberts is definitely on my bucket list. It is one of only three AAA five diamond restaurants in Florida. There's also a few pool bars and lounges on property as well. Would I stay at the Grand Floridian again in a heartbeat? I think that the biggest con to the Grand Floridian is the cost. The base price is $584 a night, which is steep. The Grand Floridian is also a DVC or Disney Vacation Club resort. The points for the Grand Floridian start, depending on the season, they start at 17 night, which really isn't that high. I definitely feel blessed that we were able to stay there, and I don't know when we'll be staying there again, but it really was special. It did, you know, it's called the Grand Floridian. It did definitely feel grand. The architecture is unique. The smell is amazing. Um, the grounds were incredible. Most all of the cast members were amazing. We did not have a good experience checking in. Um, the girl who checked us in, I think that she was new. I know she was part of the Disney College program and I just don't think she knew what she was doing. She gave us some incorrect information which I knew wasn't true and so I got a little frustrated with her. Um, but I wasn't going to let that ruin our trip. We had amazing service at the stores. The bellhops were amazing and when we checked in we had a lot of luggage and they drove us on the golf cart to our room which was kind of fun and talked about the property. They're very knowledgeable and there's a greeter out front who we had a good experience with. It was truly amazing and if you ever get the opportunity don't hesitate to stay there. I know the cost is a lot. But even if it's just for a couple nights, it really is something that you will never, ever forget. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I would love for you to subscribe if you have not already. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!